Hello and welcome back to the Evolution of Medicine podcast. And I am really excited today to not only welcome some very uh, good friends of the Evolution of Medicine, but also to try something technologically that we've never done before. Uh, so I'm here, James, in Venice Beach, California, and coming from the Chi Center in New Mexico, we have my partner at the Evolution of Medicine, Gabe Hoffman, and Ming Tonggu, a Qigong master, and we're going to have a conversation about it. Welcome, guys, and glad that the tech seems to be working super strong so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe yeah, I yeah. can start with you just to start off the, uh, the interview here. So, you know, technology, ironically, sort of pays an important role in sort of how you got connected to Qigong and, and to Ming Tong. Yeah, maybe yeah. we could just start there. Absolutely, yeah. So let me give everyone a, a story of how, how I connected with, mm. with Ming Tong here. So um, one night, you know, I was basically on YouTube looking for just always into health as we are in our community and looking for videos. And there was one Qigong master who had really tight, high quality videos. So I, that was the one I watched. I mean, you guys, those in our audience know what we're always teaching and talking about. So I had never come across a tech empowered Qigong master, but this I've met, I've met him. He's right here. So um, I watched the video and then I got connected. He had an online course. He also had an autoresponder set up and I got the emails. And so I signed up for the online course. And for a year, I've been practicing Qigong. I, I was practicing for a year in my room by myself, uh, just based on what, what they had set up, what, what Ming Tang had set up uh, educationally wise. And then we connected later and I, I saw what him and, and the Chi Center and what they were all about and, and the amount of tech and how much overlap there was and how he was approaching building and growing his Qigong community and how similar it was to how we were building the EvoMed community. So I, I just was, I reached out like, hey, let's, let's talk. And also I became passionately involved in how powerful this was. But, but just to kind of start off, I mean, Ming Tang was doing the things that we were teaching people and I just felt such a resonance with that. And then of course the, the Qigong itself was so powerful and that's one piece. And then later, We'll get into the other pieces to why I felt like it's so relevant for our community, not just on the tech end, but also on the medicine end. But then I'll, let me just turn over to Ming Tong. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Gav, for this opportunity, you know, sitting together, share with each other, share this uh, amazing, you know, with this amazing evil med community. So, so again, through the technology, how amazing we can connecting with each other, share deeply in the personal level as well, professional levels. So yeah, my side of the story is really was, uh, you know, once we made a personal connection, I was really touched by what uh, Evil Med is, is doing in the functional medicine world even beyond. It's really about bridging, you know, the community among the patients and also, you know, the doctors and the functional medicine specialists and providing the technology, the platform, so we can really expanding not only the new information, but uh, the, the new education, the new empowerment, new healing modality, you know, to whoever is ready to take on. So there's much, much more greater potential than the old paradigm we are in. So I'm so excited this template is available already, so able to share now, you know, especially share you with you directly. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really exciting. And one of the themes in the evolution of medicine has been community. And one of the first things that Gabe told me about with you and what you were doing was this sort of incredible story of the, the Qigong Hospital in, uh, in China. And maybe we could use that as a context to help everyone who doesn't understand what Qigong is right now to know what it is and also how it's been used traditionally in medical systems of the past and the current. Yes. So again, make it a long story short is um, my teacher, Dr. Penn, is a medicine doctor, trained officially and formally in Western medicine, but also trained in the Chinese traditional medicine, and uh, learned Qigong as a, as a practice, as a deep energetic sciences from childhood. So he started to experiment in using the Qigong more gradually, gradually, and realizing the incredible benefit, especially for 
chronic condition, incurable condition, getting the incredible result. And he took one step further beyond just history. The history of Chinese, you know, Qigong is more for like esoteric, and also the healing is available more in the martial art world. And, but it's kind of, you know, restricted. It's not an open knowledge, so to speak. As a doctor, he wanted to open this to, you know, experimenting with his patient, then realizing the true power, you know, this is the base for longevity. So longevity is based on health, you know, healing. It's the same thing. So without health and healing, there's no longevity. So the Qigong is really longevity practice. So quickly he realizing more power by working people together in group. And that's what we're doing, you know, in the space here. Actually, we're in the middle of a uh, retreat, four weeks long retreat, we're in the middle of the second you know, week, and just observing the incredible change among the people when we come in together, accessing the amazing power. It's really kind of same power as I experienced in China in the medicine as Qigong hospital. So what uh, my teacher, Dr. Pen, did is really, um, really pioneers this kind of uh, uh, practice as medicine to a large population. And at the time, there were 7,000 people in the medicine in Qigong hospital when I was there in one summer. And um, continuously staying in the center at least minimally for 28 days, one cycle. And so what he did is really compare the result. You know, as a medicine doctor, he wants to see the evidence. He wants to see the data. So he's collecting the data by have a measurement, you know, the diagnosis beforehand, before the program, then afterward the program. So the result is, is, is extraordinarily, basically 95% you can see measurable improvement. And then specific illness, certain complete kill rate with the different statistics. So then what happened is really beyond just, you know, um, whatever people have done in the past, accessing the energy, the energy uh, of the mind, body, heart inside of us. So we can talk about the practice, uh, share the insight later on. So the bottom line is really about accessing the capacity of mind, body, heart beyond something else, beyond someone else, this internal inner medicine. So I think of this as a mind-body medicine or energy medicine, you know. So that is uh, the brief history. Yeah. So James, and <clears throat> let me just go, because this, this story mm. is really what, it's right now I'm on retreat mm. with Ming Tang. This is the second retreat I've been to in two and a half months. And it, just to go back over some of this story, basically Dr. Pang and what I learned mm. was when they say medicineless Qigong hospital, they literally had a center in China that functioned for 20 years. And when they say medicine-less, they don't mean just no pharmaceuticals. They mean there was no acupuncture, there was no herbs, there was no supplementation. This was just Qigong. And uh, over the course of 20 years, 250,000 people came through that hospital. And Dr. Pang had it set up where they would evaluate people before going into the hospital they had to be evaluated before they could go through. Then a month later, they'd be reevaluated, and he kept statistical uh, data to see what was improving, including different types of ailments, uh, illnesses and ailments. I mean, in a lot of ways, they had a more structured uh, tracking plan than we've had in the, in the West with some of the integrated medicine we've been trying. So I was so blown away by this story. Like, I, it bears repeating. I, I still can't believe it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> It's, um, but, and, and one of the key uh, pieces that, that they learned when, I, when I've read up on this hospital is that the bigger the community got, the higher the results. So actually, the more people were practicing together, and so it started you know, smaller, and by the end, it's 7,000 people, but what Ming Tang is saying is it's 7,000 people a day every single day of the year, all together, and then getting reevaluated. Um, so... Anyway, that, that was just so touching and inspiring to me that the, I came on the retreat because the, the well, I'll let Ming Tang share, but the Qigong Hospital is not around anymore. And really where this still happens is when Ming Tang does month-long retreats in New Mexico. And so that was where I really wanted to experience what this was. And, and I would also say, Ming Tang, very interesting to talk about what types of people are here because 
the, the degree of um, severity of some of the illnesses is really fascinating. Yeah. So, yeah, in, like in this room, in this tree, we have about more than 50 people and some stay in one week, some stay for whole months long. It's really probably, I would say more than 50 people have a severe diagnosis. That means they have uh, tried everything else already before they show up in this retreat, and most time from the helpless place. Then another 30% is more people have more emotional issues and really even mental psychological issues and also coming from a place of burnout, so to speak, in life, stress. And then another one, uh, probably another 25% is more from uh, the people who are healers, you know, healthcare professionals from different modality, including people in our professional training program. So the whole range of people coming together is also creating a magic, creating a magic. People from different perspective, different experience, different background, able to bring different facet, not only their knowledge, but their way of connecting their health, connecting their life, connecting with each other, and become a really powerful process. So for me, you know, I understand deeply, not only from a direct experience in the Medicine Qigong Hospital, I know <laughs> it works, <laughs> works with everyone. And as long as the person is willing to do the work, that's the, one of my job is getting the people to do the work. Uh, as a health practitioner, you all know how you, difficult it is getting people to do something for themselves. <laughs> so when we do things in such a way, you know, creating the amazing result, I contributing to the three powerful key. One is really this container of retreat. Yeah, it's really allow people consistently, but also most intensively doing the practice. Yeah, push their boundary. Yeah get into, you know, facing what the deepest uh, challenges is. You know, we all know the deepest challenges, physical, emotional, mental blockages, limitations. Yeah, so from there we may choose the wrong food, choose, you know, wrong relationship, choose even, uh, you know, whatever job even, choose, uh, you know, wrong, is like stressful or unhealthy, not only choice, but the reaction to the world in general. So what are we here doing is really, Jim, is addressing the deeper cause of disease. That is the stress. And from that place, the contraction of energy is really affecting the mind, body, heart function. So the key is acknowledging the mind, body, heart, spirit as one, as one energy system and retraining them to awaken the greater capacity and the function. So I love the, the, the words functional medicine. <laughs> you go straight to the function. You're just like literally retraining, awakening the function, you know, inside of you. You know, before the, the knowledge is like the function is there. Before you not diagnosed with any disease, before you were depressed, before you had injury. So how to recover that function, reconnecting that discovering that, awakening that. And that is like the, the powerful bottom line goes straight addressing. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's uh, drawing some, some themes, I think, that we've seen all the way through the functional forum, the evolution of medicine. One is, you know, is, is you know, focusing on function, like a new paradigm that's based on building the function. That's why we've aligned very clearly with functional medicine that there's a, there's a process there. The second is, you know, the power of community and getting these people into a group to support each other. And that's been a, a big thing. But I guess one of the things I just wanted to mention is that when I speak to functional medicine doctors who have been doing it for a long time, you know, typically what they do is at the beginning, they get really excited about the new supplements and labs and other things that they can do. But over time, you see them realizing that actually exactly what you're talking about here is the real work. It's really getting people to think differently about themselves, about their problems, understand their power to change those problems differently. So I'd love to just talk into that because I feel like, you know, I guess the question that I want to know is for the average functional medicine doctor, why do you think this sort of experience or, or Qigong in general is a strong adjunct um, uh, thing or modality to recommend to people who are reversing chronic disease or trying to reverse? Beautiful. Ian, Gabby might want to speak to this. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess this has sort of been very much um, 
speaks to my journey, right? A lot of people know my story. When I was younger, I had had, um, I dealt with Hodgkin's mm -hmm. disease and cancer, and that's how I got into this whole field. And, you know, one of the turning points in my life was beginning to work with supplements and nutrition. Uh, and, and I really had to be pretty sick before I thought, okay, let me do something proactive. And, you know, from that day forward, I, I regained my health very strongly and ended up in the, um, in this industry and, you know, was a practitioner for 10 years. And then James, obviously you and I have been, you know, developing this community and spending a lot of time with practitioners. But the other thing I found was there were certain times where I'd work with people or even with my own myself, like there were certain things that maybe wouldn't improve and it didn't matter how much I took. And, and I spent so much time sort of caught up with jumping from diet and nutrition to foods all over the place, supplements. And one of the things you learn with Qigong is you could do everything you're doing and do Qigong. Do everything you're doing and do Qigong. And over time, you will need to do less of all of those things. And what I can tell you now is in the last year and a half, my diet has become so much more freed up. I am on, went from like 15 supplements a day to like one. And I feel better than I felt in a long time. And what's happened is I've just got, I just ended up doing more Qigong and less of everything else. But, you know, to not just make it about Qigong, but one of the things we see in mind-body medicine is it's so much about our belief system and our mind and our story and how powerful that is. So Qigong has been a direct technology for me to take back control of some of my belief systems because I did have, a, um, and I continue to work with just, the fact that supplements and nutrition have felt like saved my life, and it was very challenging to take back some of that power. You know, they were very important for that period of time, and they still are, and they're needed, but I think all of the people in our community realize you don't necessarily want to be on these things for the rest of your life. You know, it's good for a period of time, but ultimately, for me, like, I wanted to figure out what do I need to do to get co enough confidence and you know, we've talked about the placebo and the nocebo, James. I know that's a big interest of yours and mine. So I, I just, it really does relate. I don't know, Ming Tom, what you could add to that. Yeah. So my experience is, again, you know, Qigong allow people expanding their options. And like, as you said, empowering themselves, not only their mind, but also working with the body directly, working with the emotion directly. And from that place, the energy awakening, opening to the inherent nature of healing the health. And as this, as a container, as a foundation, so to speak, in this process, any other medicine works better. Even conventional aeropathic medicine start to work better and even reducing the side effects. And then the supplement or food, whatever else you're working, including syrup, also works better. And so on one hand, it's like from uh, any health practitioner point of view, it's very simply put, uh, is, uh, if the client is engaging in their health, in their healing process, then whatever you give them, yeah, it works better, more effective. If they're not engaging, just depend on you, then, you know, judging it's working or not working, stressed about it, then it's, it's, it's like reducing its effectiveness, actually. <laughs> so that's how I look at it. On one hand, it's reducing the side effect of some of the medicine naturally has. On the other hand, it is enhancing the benefit of whatever medicine, supplement, including food. Then on the other hand, it's addressing the deeper level of, you know, disease, dis-ease the physical disease, emotional disease, even the mental disease, and they really empower people, you know, um, to the place of true health, true empowerment. I think uh, it's also, you know, we, in the gap now, we're talking about how that relating to people in the professional field. You know, it's like people come to you, you know, want to have more health. If whatever way you show them to get in more health, they're going to come to you more often. Yeah. So it's like, in, you know, some of us are you know, providing a whole range of options, but you have to empower them, continue in whatever way you can empower them. So that is one way, you know, my job is empower people, take responsibility for their own mind, body, uh, heart, you know, health, yeah, functional. Absolutely. And it seems like one thing I just wanted to draw out of that is, 
you know, one thing that Jeff Bland talks about a lot is that the old medical system is like the diagnosis and the sort of top-down fear-based system. And what we're really talking about in, in functional medicine or, or, or Qigong otherwise is sort of like a grassroots starting with the patient and moving upwards. And, you know, I think one of the things that we've had is a sort of hangover where people have been trying to do, you know, uh, up and out prognosis medicine in a sort of a diagnosed down and in mindset. And so what I can see from Gabe's journey here is that like, you know, it started with him. He was looking, he found the mentorship and it's his journey that's happening through rather than like you doing stuff to him like in an acupuncturist office, it might be where it's the acupuncture that's changing things. Otherwise, and maybe you guys could just speak into that because we're really interested at this moment in our development, as we start to put our money where our mouth is as Evo Med and model for the community how to deliver this type of care at, care, uh, care at scale. Just some thoughts that you have about how to deliver up and out prognosis-based medicine to the masses. Beautiful, you know, I love uh the vision you just clearly shared, yeah, the continuation of empowering the patients, but as addressing the deep cause beyond the diagnosis, beyond the symptoms even. So that is really, you know, what I'm so passionate about in Qigong is addressing the deep cause. You know, often you're thinking, oh, okay, for example, the symptom of Parkinson, diagnosis of Parkinson, if from a conventional point of view, you're thinking, oh, this is uh, relating to dopamine, not enough dopamine, or dopamine not flowing well, which might be true. But the deeper question is, we don't ask in the conventional medical world, is what causing the deficiency of the dopamine? <laughs> Before you just trying to you know, fix the dopamine. So far, all the drugs you know, produced trying to fix dopamine, not only all have side effect, has a limited you know, impact on the true functionality of the dopamine of this body, which is also not only biologically, chemically relating to the body, is emotionally related. So often we say not only the brain is relating to the dopamine, but your heart is also limiting dopamine, your emotion, directly is responsible to producing the dopamine. So on one hand, we know oh, the dopamine is producing the happiness, but actually the happiness is equally true. The happiness is producing the dopamine. <laughs> so if you can produce the happiness in your heart, then the dopamine come, and then the brain become healthier. So we're kind of missing big part of the equation always emphasizing the physical, physical, physical only, without realizing the physical is, is also the consequence of the subtle, the mental, the emotional, and everything else. So we really have to complete in this equation. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things, and it's interesting to talk about Parkinson, and being here on retreat with Ming Tang, you actually get mm -hmm. to spend time with people who are dealing with, I mean, mm -hmm. I, mean I guess I could ask you, you know, Ming Tan can speak to some of the, the types of ailments that they've worked with and that are consistently here because you spend, and we're, we're in a room together for 14 hours a day. I mean, when we're on retreat, this is not like a vacation retreat. This is like you're doing Qigong all day long and you're doing it with people with all different levels of, of challenges. And um, it's, it's incredible. I've never experienced anything like it. And, but, you know, Parkinson's, for example, one of the things that happens right away people start feeling different emotionally mm. first. Mm. And, um, you know, Ming Tang, maybe you could speak to some of the sure. recoveries you've been a part of, because sure. you're not talking about, like, high, hypertension. Mm. We, in fact, one of the things Ming Tang can share with you is that they found this, the more severe uh, the illness, the better the <laughs> outcomes. <laughs> and that is understandably the mind-body connection. When the mind is more dedicated, you know, on like crisis, you know, of the severe condition, the mind making more effort. Then you can engage in the practice more deeply. That's why the result often is better than the minor condition. So it's easy to understand. It's no-brainer. But often, if we don't ask the question deeply, thinking that is kind of weird, strange, it's not weird, strange at all. It's basically mind, body, heart connection, the science of that. So speaking of, you know, the disease, you know, in general, basically, I welcome, you know, everyone, because I know the Qigong is, can address the deep cause of any disease and addressing you know, the deeper, you know, cause of any challenges. 
You don't have to have a diagnosis in order to benefit from Qigong. It's so good for prevention, so good for accessing your power, your brain, power, your mind, accessing you know, your own capacity of being a loving, kind person, being a healer, being all other, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> the destiny, you know, of life calling us for. So, but it particularly, and I also say, you know, I welcome particularly the, the, the severe cases, the, the, the cases, you know, the conventional or even alternative medicine doctor doesn't want to deal with. <laughs> Bring on, just come here, come here. And because these people often even have a more, you know, kind of determination. The more desire to make a difference. And it's incredible to see the change with all these conditions. So just name few, you know, one is uh, Parkinson among, you know, most challenging condition and other neurological condition, including MS, including, you know, even stroke, including, you know, even paralyzed. Sometimes people show up on wheelchair. And then second kind of category is more to do with the immune system, autoimmune system condition. Could it be chronic pain, you know, fatigue, and could it be, you know, silo issues, hormone issue in general. Then another condition is to do with a more like, a, a, let's say, um, a Lyme disease. This is, you know, externally kind of infected in general. Yeah, there's no particular cue in the, in the, in the medical field already. So we have many cases, complete recovery of all these chronic incurable condition. Yeah. So what people come is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, I think it's amazing. And also, you know, one of the things that's been something that, you know, has, has been, I guess, something that we've done badly as a community in the integrated medicine space is tracking the outcomes. And so, you know, it's really exciting to see people taking that part of it seriously. We wish everyone would take that part of it seriously because ultimately we need to prove that this stuff works. And there is the technology available right now to be able to do that. And it's great to, you know, to know that this is an important part of what you're doing so that we can understand it. I guess, Gabe, one thing I want to ask you is, you know, the kind of practitioners that listen to this podcast, you know, you obviously had an interaction with Ming Tong in a digital environment, and it sounds like it was free at the beginning. So, you know, for the doc, for people who are listening to this, maybe there's a Qigong person in their community who they can invite to the functional forum meetup, but maybe there isn't. And so, you know, how did you find interacting with what's, you know, quite a, quite a real way of understanding your body through a technology platform that was ultimately like scalable and video based? Yeah, I mean, it, it, well, it was incredible, you know, and it, and it made me really think about what we can offer as a community in terms of, you know, just sharing what you can do to help people is so powerful. You help people, you don't even know you're helping. Ming Tang actually shared on retreat an email from a woman who he never met, who had uh, tumors, and she had been following his videos without meeting him, and he got a letter from her that said, hey, six months ago, I found your videos, All I've been, and, and my doctor's been tracking my tumors, and I did your videos, and I just wanted to thank you. My tumors have shrunk, and then they disappeared. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, that story. Totally I, gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so Ming, there are things like that happening. Ming Tang gets people reaching out that he's never heard of and you know just to say that we always are very big on how can you share your content how can we share what we're doing now specifically for me I was able to um, get into the course and, and just follow along and, and it, it was fine and, and I I believe like yeah the videos themselves and the way I engaged with his online course was was great for me it was perfect I'm pretty motivated and I'm someone who can commit to something and, and as can our practitioners and many, many um, patients. So I, I thought it was fine. And at least there was a certain level of, um, you know, I was missing the community part, which I've been able to get here at the, at the uh, retreat. But I felt like in terms of the wisdom and, and how, because um, you could end up with any type of teacher. So I was very grateful to work with someone like Ming Tang, who's you know a, a master and also is connected to this lineage in China. So you know all of these cases, when I saw all these stories of people who had recovered from these il illnesses through this type of qigong, I just was like, how can I not commit to this? This is like a no-brainer. 
and definitely the course was set up in a way where I could just follow along. And so ha meeting a, a, someone like Ming Tang who's also using tech and, is, and no, no other tools, and I'm having that experience by myself, or this woman's having her experience, made me think very differently about the future of medicine. I cannot agree more of that. It's like, uh, you know, in general, through the technology, you know, the um, template we, you know, sharing together. It's like first is uh, you may, you know, just offering, sharing the information is so important already, opening people's mind, their possibility, bring hope to people. And even the technology can do more. The next step is really education beyond just the information. How to providing education for people engage with this process continuously. You know, any education takes a period of time of commitment. When you go to high school or college, you know, graduate school, <laughs> it's a few years of program, so to speak. It's really kind of uh, to applying what they're learning. In this case, it's mind, body, you know, experience. So it has to apply to your own daily life, your own body experience. So it takes time to really embody it. So our job, you know, as um, you know, healthcare professional practitioners is, is, is also empower them, continue whatever you're providing them to empower them, continue in this process as education, as embodiment. You know, one of the challenges like this uh, is we call comparison and compliance, yeah, is really about accountability. You know, how to help the person be comfortable for their own process, their own healing, their own responsibility. And I feel the technology can help us greatly as well because we cannot be afford to be around in person all the time. <laughs> and the scale of it, you know, I, I really think, I really respect that. You know, one of the things that I've been speaking a lot about recently on different, you know, uh, summits and so forth is how to get the most out of functional medicine at the least possible cost. And so that we have these three C's that we, that we talk about before you get to a doctor. The first is content, right? So you see, you put out all the content, games watching the content for free, getting indoctrinated, getting part of it. The second is community, like finding other people. If Gabe finds another person in his building that does Qigong and they're doing it together, it's valuable for accountability and support. You're obviously building community with what you're doing. And then the third C is sort of coaching where you have some sort of professional teaching you for a certain period of time. But ultimately, all of these things are at a much lower cost than, you know, the, the, you know, the, health, the, the help of a professional who's a doctor or otherwise. So, you know, it fits very well into, um, you know, to our ideas. So, you know, I guess, uh, look, I, I really appreciate, you know, taking the time to, to talk about this. We sort of actively resisted talking too much about energy medicine on all of our platforms for the last four years because our priority at the evolution of medicine <laughs> is really attract doctors from family medicine, primary care, and the specialties and move them to take the very first step. And this is really not the first step, but ultimately I think that, you know, with the tracking that we're doing, we can see that this is a significant modality to be able to curate for people with chronic disease, particularly when there's a lot of either mental, emotional issues, you know, um, social issues and, and you know, longstanding. And, and James, I would say too, you know, Doctors are under a ton of stress, and this is what we know. You know, one of the things I've been pushing mm -hmm. Ming Tang to do is to create some retreats that are just for medical professionals, because I think that, and, and what we've learned as we develop the the, function, the evolution of medicine community is, you know, doctors and practitioners live in a bubble. They're under a ton of stress. They don't get to spend a lot of time with each other, and our whole um, our whole existence was based on the fact that James and I started these meetups and these places where doctors could come together and spend time with each other and just realize you're not alone. You know, we're, we got to figure this out together. And um, they're also having their own health issues. And most people who got into functional or integrative medicine, they have a story, like I have a story. You know, they're passionate for a reason and they're dealing with health issues. So. I really feel like, and, and Bing Tong's moving in this direction, I think they're actually putting together mm -hmm. something, but um, you know, having a, a place for, uh, for doctors and medical professionals to get together and work on their own health, but also learning tools that complement their practice. Because I think the idea is that the Qigong, you just do whatever you're doing and do Qigong. You can just add it. And it's a, 
complement to anyone's life personally and then something that a medical professional can easily share and then improve their results, which is what Dr. Pang saw. And then obviously your referrals improve because one of the things we talked about on the forum, James, is your patients don't really want to see you. You know, ultimately, <laughs> you get better so that they don't have to see Face you anymore. Face their truth, right. You know, we, and so, um, anyway, yeah, that, yeah. I have to share that part. I'm truly, you know, grateful even um, you have this exchange with the uh, functional medicine community, including the last uh, summer, the future of uh, functional medicine. And as a surprise, really, not only we all have the same concern to, you know, providing the best thing for our client patient, but also realizing the healthcare professional, including leaders, they're very, you know, interested in yoga, in meditation, in Qigong. Many of them know Qigong already. Here it's beneficial. But it's like really how we can take the next step, you know, really embody that truly, you know, become healthier and happier and more wise being. Then from that place, we can naturally empower others. So the vision, you know, for all of us we're sharing is really about empowering the healthcare professional, so thousands at a time, then we can truly heal millions of others at a time. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the vision that we've got, and that's why Gabe and I are doing what we what we do. We realize that if we can, you know, change the trajectory of a medical practice, you know, it can change the lives of, of five, ten, twenty thousand people directly, and then millions more indirectly. And then if you have many practices, it can really start to, you know, to go viral. So Look, we're here at the Evolution of Medicine. We're super excited to actually not just talk about this, but to start to facilitate it. So if you've been listening to the podcast and you're thinking, you know, I'd like to try some Qigong, try it out, see how it works for me, experience it directly, um, we're going to make a special offer. Basically, if you go to goevomed.com slash Qigong, uh, we're going to give you on there, there's going to be an article on Qi Medicine, and then there's a video called Guided Healing Meditation and an active energy practice that you can do for free. Just start to get into it. We've got a special deal for you if you want to do the online course. Normally it's $87, it's a month long training. You can upgrade for just $57 and do the same course that Gabe did. And um, there's also a three month course. But also we'd love to invite you, Gabe and myself and Ming Tong and some other you know, pretty prominent people in the um, functional medicine community are going to be coming to a VIP retreat for health professionals and practitioners that's happening December 3 to 9 in, um, in New Mexico. And so, you know, we are, you know, we are going to take our first steps into energy medicine uh, with the evolution of medicine. The cool thing about the name is that medicine is going to continue to evolve and we can bring it along. But if you go to goevomed.com slash qigong, you can get enrolled in the first course. And uh, if you want to come down to New Mexico and hang with the three of us, you're more than welcome. So... <laughs> Hey, I want to say thank you, Ming Tong, not only for sharing this and the, you know, the relationship you have with Gabe. Um, I think it's going to make a big difference to a lot of people as the ripple effects come out from this and, and where we're going next with the evolution of medicine. But also just, you know, this technology connection here, you know, if, if we had an unlimited number of doctors really putting it out there and communicating in this way, you know, we, we've got to find these hooks. Different people are going to have different hooks. They're going to have different moments in their lives where they're ready to hear these kind of things. There's going to be different messages. Those messages may say the same things, but look different. Uh, and, you know, we're going to need an army of these people going out and using the technology <laughs> like that. This right now. And so I hope that for some people, this has really resonated. I know for other people, there'll be other people who resonate. But if you're listening to this as well as a practitioner, you need to get your message out there. That's why we created the Practice Accelerator the website stuff that we're making it's all about making it easy for you to go out share your message and transform the health of your community i think this is an important piece we're very excited to explore it and thanks for facilitating today and um you know showing up the way that you do in the world mm. yeah thank, thank you, you jim thank you Gab. thank you yeah i'm excited to see you again in person soon <laughs> 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 absolutely 
Well, this has been the Evolution of Medicine podcast. I'm your host, James Maskell. Go to goevomed.com slash qigong to find out more about Ming Tong. Take some of the trainings and try some qigong. But for me, for my partner Gabe, and for Ming Tong, all coming from you from different places, it's been great to have you here on the podcast. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.